Hi, fellow classmates, instructors, and friends. This is Ginny, your humble TCM student who knows absolutely nothing about this field, but wanted to start this audio journal to record everything TCM. If you would like to join my study group as well, please come learn with me. And let's get healthier by healing our bodies from the inside out holistically together. Hello, Cuckoo fam. Thank you so much for tuning back in with me for another study session. Today is very special because、uh, we have our very first practitioner joining us. Her name is Allison. We're going to get to know her a little better today in regards to her story and how she got into the field of traditional Chinese medicine and what she practices. When I found you, I thought you were so funny because in your <laughs> Instagram posts, you would have different memes.、Yes. <laughs> uh, the one that I just saw today, it was just so funny. It was like a picture of the uterus, and then you did like a voiceover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that one. That one was yeah,、fun. <laughs> that one was hilarious, and I love it. I love how you inject funny things into your IG、uh, posts. Because I find a lot of different practitioners usually just kind of state facts, and they're less humorous. But I, I do like humor, so I really do appreciate you adding that side of you into、uh, your your Instagram. Oh, cool! So without further ado, I would love to welcome Allison. I would love to get to know you better. So, if you can let me know where you're from, and in terms of where you're located, did you actually come from somewhere else and then move to Vancouver, or are you just, you know, raised and born in Vancouver? Yeah, no, I'm. I've been in Vancouver for almost seven years. I am American, so I'm originally from the states. And I moved to Vancouver from、uh, New York City, where I was living there for quite a few years. Although、um, I was originally born in Chicago, so I am、um, American, living in Canada. I'm a PR, but I want to get my citizenship soon because I really like Vancouver. I think it's a cool city. Vancouver is beautiful. Oh my goodness, it's great. <laughs> in terms of nature-wise, like you get everything. You get the waters, you get the mountains. Like it's, just, and, and then you also have the city.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a good mix. Oh, I I love Vancouver. Yeah, I also have family there. Oh, cool. And,、uh, when I visited, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's a really nice city. The like air is so clean, the water is so clean, and yeah, and it's a really great city to practice、uh, Chinese medicine too. So yeah, I'm very happy to be here. I was wondering. What do you specialize in? Yeah, I've done a lot of additional training in、uh, like fertility and reproductive health, and obviously just specializing in like hormones and women's health in specific. Nice. So, do you just do acupuncture, or do you also prescribe like herbal? Medicine as well. Yeah, I do both. So I did,、um, yeah, the four-year traditional Chinese medicine practitioner degree, where、uh, I'm licensed to do acupuncture, and I'm also a licensed Chinese herbalist. So I do use both in my practice. Oh my god, that's amazing! Because I know some people only do one and not the other, but having that combination, I, I think it's very important. Yeah, I, I went into it knowing I wanted to do the herbs. Yeah, because it works hand in hand in a way. Exactly. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so I'm just so curious as to what got your interest in terms of getting into traditional Chinese medicine. Right. Yeah, I get asked that a lot, and I don't have because I got into it very young too, and I don't have a very great story.、Um, I originally went to art and architecture school in New York.、Um, I moved there when I was 18. And、um, realized very quickly that it was not for me. I lasted about a semester and a half before I dropped out, and then I traveled around the U.S. with some friends for a summer. And that was when I randomly—I can't remember how I got a hold of it—but I picked up a book about traditional Chinese medicine, and I was just really blown away by it. Like that there was this 
I don't know, completely different method of medicine that's so ancient and it just made so much sense to me and it just like sparked this sort of fire in me. And so um, when we went back to New York, I decided to go to school for it. And so I decided that this is what I was going to do with my life before I even had a treatment myself, which I thought, think is kind of weird and very wow. like Aries of me. But I, um, I just knew that it was what I wanted to do. Wow. That's OK. That's like really random in terms of how you picked up that book. <laughs> yeah. Because if you think about it, it's not readily available. It's not even searched upon a lot I, I want to say like it's either you know it or you don't and I know it has become more popular but for you to randomly pick up that book I think it's definitely fate oh I totally believe it yeah this is what I was meant to do and it's very weird but uh the I don't know the journey that came about in this way but yeah I definitely do think it was fate wow like so when you started learning all of this was there like um I mean, to be very honest, like it's already hard as a Chinese to understand traditional Chinese medicine. Like, is it hard for you because of like the language barrier and everything? Yes, absolutely. Like, because so much of the direct translations are from our, our Chinese texts and they're very like poetic and metaphorical and like that in and of itself is hard to understand. So, yeah, in a sense, it was like, learning this whole other kind of medicine as well as this whole other kind of language whole other kind of culture all at the same time so yeah it, it's definitely a lot at first it took me like i mean the foundations are really important because in the first year of, of acupuncture school because you honestly nothing makes sense until you're in like your second year <laughs> and you just kind of have to get through the learning curve and then all of a sudden things just start kind of piecing together and then you're like oh this actually makes sense it does take some time to really let it sink in but yeah <laughs> it's hard <laughs> i feel like when i was talking to a few practitioners they are all saying the same thing in regards to when they're going through the education of learning TCM, like it, it's still a learning journey now because it, everything is just so abstract. There's like so many theories around it and there's always these like epiphany moments that happens to them. It's like, oh my totally. God, yes. oh my God, yes. Like this and this goes, you know? Okay, with that said, how did TCM change you and molded your life as you, you know, went down the path of education and you start to learning more? Did you feel like your lifestyle started to change with, you know, everything that you were learning at school? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I feel like it, it really made me see like nature and life in a very different way. Like it's not this separate entity apart from ourselves, but this macrocosm that mirrors our internal microcosm. So basically everything that happens in nature also happens um, in the human body using the same principles. So for me specifically, I actually started Ch Chinese medicine school vegan and also concurrently with an eating disorder. <laughs> and I felt like it really helped me understand like what was really healthy for me specifically diet wise. And it really helped me like understand, oh, this is the energetics of meat and this is why it can help me or these other food groups that I was avoiding. And it just really helped me recover also from an eating disorder because I understood the importance of nourishing food. And then also connecting uh, nourishing food into how I feel in my body. And so it was such a disconnect that I think a lot of us have, like what's in our environment, what we put into our body and how we actually feel. And so making that connection um, definitely changed my life. And yeah, there's so much traditional Chinese medicine lifestyle principles that I've definitely uh, adapted to, like, you know, temperature of your food and what time you need to go to bed by and the importance of staying warm and avoiding wind and like all those little things that you kind of learn in Chinese medicine school. Uh, once you start experimenting with, with it in your life, you kind of understand like, oh, this is what they were talking about. I can't believe they knew this so long ago. Oh my God, you just brought up so many things that I have to ask. And that was the main reason why I kind of wanted to start 
these like journal logs as well because when I was thinking about it, I was like, okay, then it's really hard to be vegan because in TCM, you know, you gotta have protein and they do suggest to have meat. Mm -hmm. In meat, there's different nutrients that helps with your body. So can you practice TCM and still be vegan? Yeah, it's a big question. <laughs> Right? Like, I was like thinking, is there actually like a workaround about that and even with your diet? So interesting how you brought that up because fact definitely crossed my mind. And all of those like small little facts that you even stated in terms of like keeping your body warm, the temperature of food. I've always been curious. Growing up, my parents have always been like, okay, don't eat cold stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll blow dry your hair after you wash it like and i never understood why and they can't explain it to me neither yeah, <laughs> yeah so hopefully with all of these chats like we could uncover the reason why um we need to do these things and hopefully change our lifestyle yeah okay so um how long have you been practicing acupuncture and herbalism now? This is your full-time? Yeah, yeah, this is my full-time job. Um, I've been practicing for about four or five years. Um, since starting school, I started school eight years ago, so I've been in this world for, for about eight years. Do you have any memorable stories from your practices? Like, it could range from like a situation that was really difficult to like perhaps overcoming a challenge or like just something really odd that you've come across that you're like oh whoa yeah definitely um one of my fertility patients comes to mind she was uh, in her early 30s when she came to us and she had either one or two failed ivf cycles i can't quite remember and yeah she came just after the second one was unsuccessful and she came to us for help and she had PCOS and, you know, a couple other um, things going on. And so we wanted to give her body a shot at trying to conceive naturally. And so, you know, we came up with a whole plan with, um, with PCOS. There's a whole lot of, you know, diet, lifestyle, supplement things that we did. And she followed everything to a T. Like I was so impressed and so proud of her. She did so well. So we did that for a couple months and we were just trying to regulate her cycle. Like the first thing we wanted to do after this IVF cycle didn't um, didn't work out was just to have a regular menstrual period because that's a really great sign of hormone health and a sign that what we're doing is working. And then for the life of me, we couldn't get her period to come. And so it was a couple months of um, doing a lot of acupuncture, doing all the things. And then she uh, came to me one day for her appointment and she says she was feeling a bit off and she took a pregnancy test and she was pregnant. And so she just, without even having a period after this IVF cycle, like it was so crazy. And that's just because we were working so hard on regulating her period. I mean, we were balancing her hormones, so she ovulated naturally. And then with that ovulation became pregnant right after this IVF cycle and without even having a period. It was just, it was crazy. That first ovulation right after. Wow, that's amazing. Like, it's crazy how these small lifestyle changes can help mm -hmm. and continuous with the process of doing acupuncture. And does she take herbs as well or no? I think she did a little bit. I vaguely remember, yeah, I remember doing some Chinese herbs as well, but she was coming very regularly to acupuncture. Like, I think she was coming two to three times a week. Oh, wow. Okay, so do you actually need to come that often to regulate yourself, to rebalance, or is it like a once a month thing? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so treatment frequency is like dosage of a medication, right? Like it's very important that you're taking everything at the time that it's most effective. For acupuncture, it really depends on, you know, a couple of things, how many symptoms you have, like what exactly is going on and the extent of it, the severity of it. Um, and then also how your body responds to acupuncture because everybody's body responds so differently. And so those two factors definitely uh, play a part in, in a treatment protocol. Usually my patients come in weekly when we first start off. So just once a week, sometimes twice a week if there's a lot going on. And uh, once we start to notice a reduction in symptoms, we kind of develop a more maintenance schedule, but it's kind of like that initial frequency. 
we can really get a lot of work done and really get them to a good place um, depending on what's going on. So, but yeah, it varies per person. Like I, I definitely have patients that obviously cannot afford that or their schedule doesn't allow that and which is, you know, realistic. And so I'll always try to formulate the treatment plan so in some way it works for them so maybe that means they're only seeing me maybe once a month maybe twice a month but then I'm giving them a lot more homework of stuff that they need to do at home too to sort of balance out or maybe we're doing you know mostly herbs where it's a little bit cheaper and they're doing that at home in between appointments just to help uh, improve more results so it yeah it varies a lot it makes sense because you kind of want to do it more frequently in the beginning to kind of jolt their bodies into it and then afterwards to kind of maintain it so that that makes sense exactly yeah for example that client of yours goal is to you know get pregnant and stuff will she come back after or your clients would they continuously to come back just to have regular maintenance you know what I mean is it like goal oriented or do they understand that they have to come back on a regular to uh, maintain this? Right. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously the point is we're trying to make a permanent, you know, effect in their body. Uh, and a lot of my patients, their goal is pregnancy. And so uh, once we reach that, um, I do like to support during pregnancy as well, because there's usually a lot going on and acupuncture is really great for especially early um, pregnancy to, you know, reduce chances of miscarriage and helps with first trimester symptoms, those kinds of things. Uh, and I also really like to treat more frequently right before they go into labor too for cervical ripening prep. And then usually after that, I don't see them for a while because they're very busy, <laughs> which is understandable. Sometimes they pop in here or there. Uh, and then it's like as needed, like I have some that come back uh, for postpartum support and then I have a bunch that come back because I want to start working on baby number two and so Pregnancy women's health hormones. It's at, you know at every stage of you know your reproductive life You use acupuncture to support uh, Those phases and even you know, I have a, a bunch of patients Coming to me for menopause support as well. So that kind of hormonal transition uh, but then I also have a lot of patients that I see like seasonally because they want to come in just for checkups uh, because they like how it feels and it helps regulate their nervous system or they come in more during the fall for, you know, prevention of cold. So there's so many kind of ways of uh, strategizing a treatment plan for acupuncture. Right. Well, I'm sure everyone is also different too. So the frequency of how often they come in really depends on their own bodies as well. So it makes sense. With that said, I was wondering, is there a philosophy in your life, like an easy go-to quick tip that you do every day to enhance on your health? Yeah, definitely. So one of the things I always tell my patients is start your day with something warm. It's too easy to like reach for a nice coffee or a really cold smoothie, but I always uh, tell people to start with something warm, even if it's just a warm glass of water um, or lemon water in my case is my favorite thing to do uh, to start my day with because uh, it's, it's, you want to, you know, nourish your digestive system. And in Chinese medicine, our digestive system is a fire or a furnace and we want to keep it warm because if we throw too much cold and raw at it, it, the fire gets extinguished. And then that's when you get a lot of, uh, digestive, you know, upsets where you can get a lot of bloating or bowel issues or stomach aches and digestion, all that uncomfortable stuff. A lot of it is due to the, the temperature of your food in Chinese medicine. I mean, we're warm blooded creatures and our digestive system has to turn everything warm in order for us to extract the nutrients. And so if you struggle with a lot of digestive, um, upset and digestive disorders, pay attention to the temperature of your food. Are you eating a lot of salads and smoothies and iced things, iced water, that kind of stuff? Because um, if you are, try, you know, incorporating more warm. Um, so if you, you do have a salad, totally fine. Have like something warm with it, like a warm soup on the side. Or uh, I tell my patients to make like a salad dressing that has grated ginger in it, which is energetically warm to kind of warm it up too, just to help, you know, with your digestive system extracting the nutrients so you don't get a lot of GI symptoms. Man, a lot of people need to hear that. 
<laughs> because a lot like there's like this whole craze with smoothies in the mornings because everyone's like oh smoothie in the morning that's my breakfast it's so good for you and so i'm like questioning because obviously growing up but my mom has always told me like oh don't drink cold stuff ever <laughs> so I, I also but smoothie is supposed to be good for you so it, it's mind-boggling but thank you for that explanation <laughs> <laughs> oh but i don't know you also have to like enjoy life and it's so hard i, I, I don't know it's there's a an, there's a balance like i like my smoothies too i have one like a couple times a week just because they're delicious and i love smoothies but you know you, it's hard you just gotta do your best <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what's what, what's healthy like Western is so different from what's healthy Eastern. And I think that's just like the part where it doesn't connect is where we have all of the questions. And it's and it's so hard because it's so individual dependent and also culturally dependent. And there's there's so many factors to it on what's actually healthy and good for you. I know. And we've been marketed on all of these things that are quote unquote healthy, too. Yeah, exactly. You know, like salads and smoothies and coffee. Like mm -hmm. those are huge markets yes. and juicing. Oh my gosh. You know? Yes. That's so why I was like, oh my God, like is everything fake? <laughs> <laughs> it's so existential. <laughs> yeah, like it, it blows my mind and I just question everything now. And I, I'm like, but I don't think people know about this. Mm -hmm. That on its own, like it's already like a lifestyle change uh, that we could easily adopt. And I, I love that. It's like a life hack in a way. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for taking your time to come on and share your story with us. No problem. And you let our listeners know where to find you. Perhaps there are people out there in Vancouver that would love to pay a visit to you and get your services. So if you could let them know where they could find you, that would be amazing. Sure. Well, I work at AccuBalance Wellness Center in Vancouver, British Columbia. And then uh, I'm also on Instagram. I am Sea of Chi Healing on Instagram. So you can find me there. If you like this episode, please give it a like. If you would like to hear future episodes, please subscribe. Or if you have any questions about health, please send me an email at kuko.health at gmail.com, which is K-U-K-O dot health. If you just want to say hi or drop me a DM on Instagram, come follow me at kuko dot health, which is again, K-U-K-O dot health. Thank you so, so much for listening to me today. And please stay warm and healthy out there. And I'll catch you on the next episode. Thank you. Bye. Bye.